thanks for joining us. No worries. How are you doing? Nice uh, to meet you. Yeah, I'm sound, mate. I'm sound. I'll tell you what. Well, int- introduce yourself and the band. Okay. I'm Laurie. I'm the front man of the Barefoot Bandit. And we are a heavyweight ensemble playing reggae and dub music and a bit of world music as well. We're from yeah. Devon. The epi, I've said it before, the epicenter of reggae, Devon. <laughs> so first thing, yeah. first place you think of for red reggae. Tell you what, man, the sound is is phenomenal. I love the sound, the the, the tracks, because um, it was Tony Baldwin, because you're actually on Summerfest as well, aren't you, which is fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. And when when I was talking to him about doing the festival, he went, "You need to check out the Barefoot Bandits. They're going to be opening up on the Sunday." And uh, I went and listened to it. it. Was like great. So we've been spinning your stuff on the station, and it's gone down a treat. It's really good, really oh, thank good, you. really good vibe, man. I'm but, glad you like it. Yeah, we love it. Well, we always say it. It's quite obvious. We don't have just anybody on the. Sh- I don't have anyone on the show. Time's too precious, so I don't have decent bands on. And but you are brilliant, absolutely. And I've been really looking forward to speaking to you guys. I've uh, done a few now, and you've ones that I wanted to get on the get on the show. There's a couple of others, but yeah, I really wanted to chat to you because the, the the sound, the vibe, and everything you're doing is is just bang on. Nice one, cheers, Kurt. And what uh, so what we're going to do? We we'll, we'll have a bit of a chat, an informal conversation. That's what these are, uh, getting to know you a bit. And I've got three or four tracks to play. Got some videos. So whilst the videos are on, we'll be off screen, so you're okay. And um, okay. you won't be able to see them, but unless you're watching it on Mixcloud Live, then you'll be able to watch it then. <laughs> okay. And if you watch it on YouTube, thanks very much, or wherever. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go through it. We'll have some. We'll have, we will have some questions. If you're on Mixcloud, please drop your questions in the feed, and we'll have the usual. We've got a couple of ones that we ask every time that our stupid presenters give to us. One's Eddie King. I'll get get to that in a minute. But anyway, how did you all form then, and how did you get into reggae in Devon? Well, um, my dad's from the Black Country and Midlands area, so I was I grew up listening to a lot of uh, Bob Marley and also oh, yeah. Steel Pulse, people like that. Yeah. Um, the specials, the beat, yeah, he was a massive two tone head, really. And I like the slower sort of vibe of things, really, the dubbier sort of side of things. But I love all sorts of reggae and ska anyway. But yeah, yeah I was brought up listening to that, and then I decided to form a band when I was about. 18 i think yeah um started as a three-piece just playing in pubs and stuff reggae covers and no one else was doing that around here so yeah we got lots of gigs and lots of people because it was different than the old sort of pub rockers band (laughs) yeah and then um yeah just i moved to brighton uh got some other people involved um ended up playing glastonbury and other festivals and then yeah we've just been going strong now for um, a long time, so yeah. No, it's good. It really is, and you're right. Your dad, I, I like the the fact that your dad's into that though, that two tone stuff, and I love to. The first thing I got into back in the day, because I'm of a certain yeah. age, was the old two tone. When I started to hear that, the the B and the specials and some of the other bands, I was like, oh my god, this is just amazing. Obviously, Marley was about. We all grew up with a bit of Marley, but I love dub. And I know Dan Evans, who, who who does the reggae show on a Thursday night, 6 p.m., live on Dougie Stone Radio and Mixler. There's a plug for him. Um, however, not not tomorrow's night because I'm taking over by mistake. But anyway, D- Dan loves his dub vibe, and I do. It's just There's just something about it. And I'm so pleased that you're opening up Summerfest. I think it's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah, we can't wait. I mean, like when we saw that come through with our booking agent, Hannah, we were like, whoa. That's a big show. So um, one to look forward after all of this COVID stuff, like the stuck indoors doing nothing. So exactly, yeah. and and that day starts with you guys and just goes on and on and on. And any of those acts on that that day on the Sunday? Oh God, we've lost we've lost. Uh, looks like we've lost our feed to Mixcloud. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> says we have. Says we have. But um, we'll keep recording anyway. Yeah, that day is 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 a monster day. Back to back, back to back goodness all the way through the day. And uh, you'll like the DJs that are pulling it together. They're called the Dub Defenders. Recorded anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that oh, day is no. is, is we're, a monster we're, we're day. Back, back to back. Yeah, the Dub the Dub Defenders. They're awesome as well. So that if you like your dub, 
you'll be you'll be yeah, all right yeah. with them. I'll be there, yeah, definitely. Don't, and don't <laughs> don't tell anybody, but I'm going to be on. I'll probably be on the stage on the Sunday because I know the guy. I know the dub defenders, so uh, they don't know it yet. Oh, nice. But I'm going to be on there. <laughs> I'll tell you what Get we'll on. do. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll wait for some. Uh, we'll wait for some questions to come up, and hopefully the internet won't, won't disconnect us. I'm going to play. Okay. Uh, we're going to play the official video from you guys, Hard Life, which is is there a story behind it or is it just generally? That's the name um, of the Yeah, track. just, um, yeah, like, I wrote that song a long time ago now, so it's just about trying to make your mark in the music game and, yeah, the hard troubles it brings, basically, <laughs> trying to get your name out there. I'm with, you and me both, mate. But you tell you what, <laughs> you're going in the right direction. Yeah, you buy, see, that's the frustration, isn't it? You sit there and you think, oh, my God, what's going on? I'm producing all this content. We're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing that. What's going on? And bro, yeah. It is so, so, so tough, isn't it? So tough. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right, let's have this track anyway. We'll be right back after this, people. And that, my friends, is how to produce a track. That's awesome, man. Oh, absolutely awesome. <laughs> I just love Thank it. You. I just love it. It's got, it's just got everything. It's, it's just uplifting. Love it. Love it. Well done. Very, very, very well oh, done. Nice one. Great sound. Great. great sound. And uh, yeah, love it. Love it, mate. Love it. Right. Let's go. I'll, I've lost track of where I was at. Then I was enjoying it too much. Uh, have mm-hmm. we got any questions from anyone? I think a couple of people lost us before. Uh, oh, that's one of our standard questions from the gonk that is Eddie King, um, one of our presenters and uh, directors of the company. He says, I was asked, have you got a tour van? And if you've got a tour van, what kind of tour van have you got? Yeah, we have got a tour van. We have got a Ford Transit old service van yeah. that we bought and um, just stripped out all the old um, cabinets and stuff that were in it. And um, yeah, we, we started doing it up in the middle of lockdown, but it's kind of a work in progress because we need to get some more seats in there because the band has expanded a little bit. No, so yeah. our crew, sometimes there's 10 of us going to a show so we've got six seats at the minute sometimes we have to take two vehicles which isn't ideal so we need to get some more seats in it but hopefully that <laughs> happens soon it's you got could, nice lights in it though you could go all de- <laughs> you could go all deli on us and have the other band members on the roof don't you they could hang yeah, on them yeah, on the yeah. way <laughs> Just tra- the brass see the transit van that <laughs> back in the day that was that was the mark of the gangsters because you could do a lot of ram raiding with uh transit vans get a lot uh, of gear yeah, get yeah. a lot of gear in them as well so yeah <laughs> excellent, yeah. excellent. I've so, heard they go for a long time anyway. So yeah, the, 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 the side, the, the, the great. So, what's you know, you've obviously been doing a few things. What's the, been the highlight so far? Was it Glastonbury? Well, that was, I think the last time we played Glastonbury was 2014 and the year before. So, we did two in a row and um, they were, yeah, they were amazing. Um, it's no other festival like it for me. I, I've been going since I was. 17 i think and i haven't missed one since so wow yeah i want to we're not playing this year yet but um hopefully get a gig there hopefully next year but um yeah that that's one of the highlights for me i mean there's nothing like that it's better than any sort of high you can get i think playing at glastonbury yeah um we we were lucky because um we played the year the rolling stones played and they were playing on the pyramid stage and our the tent that we were playing it was literally round the corner from the pyramid stage, and we said uh, thanks to Keith and Mick for supporting us tonight. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a great stage to have, because all of the crowds came from the pyramid stage into our tent, and yep. we were playing at like one in the morning. So you know, it was a good party. That's awesome, man. <laughs> and that's yeah. what it's all about, isn't it? That well, you can you can actually say they support us. They were on before us. Yeah, we were the main yeah, event. Before us, yeah. Of course they were. Yeah, <laughs> they finished early. We carried on one o'clock in the morning. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, if, is your fan base based round round you are where at the minute? You know, have you got a big? Yeah, block? yeah. Ma- mainly down. We we live um, on the coast, so we live. Uh, a few of us live in Exmouth, and then the rest of us live like Exeter and the surrounding areas. Yeah, yeah. So I was doing some uh, stories today, just filming around the beach around here. So um, nice, yeah. A lot of influence comes from around uh, the natural aspect of this area, I think. But yeah, a lot of our fans are mainly based down here, and then we've got fans in London as well and Bristol. So mm. yeah, mainly all around there. We've got a few fans in Thailand as well. 
Big well, shout out to Thailand. Very nice, <laughs> very nice. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a great part of the world, isn't it? Devon Cornwall is just I love it to bits. It's phenomenal. Uh, obviously, go down as a tourist, so I won't be seen as. You know what I mean? I'll be a bit of a blower in it, but I've been going since I was a kid, and it's just yeah. one of those places that you just go back to and discover new places. There's a couple of places that we discovered over the last few years and there's little villages and there's like virtually untouched. You yeah. Think, this is nice. Life's slow down here, but that's what I kind of like, I think. It's um, because with a band like us, we travel all around. So we get all the hustle and bustle from doing that. And it's nice to live down here because you've got lots of nice things to write about and a clear head. Yeah. I mean, I lived in Brighton for a while and like that was good because you had sort of beach as well as like the sort of craziness of being in a, a town slash city sort of thing. But yeah. yeah, it's nice and sleepy down here, which we kind of like, I think. Excellent. So are you, is the band into the water sports, into surfing and all that sort of stuff? Because obviously... Um, yeah, a few of us are, yeah, um, into the surfing. I mean, I used to be in surfing, but I haven't been for a long time now. But yeah, um, yeah I, I'm just well into my walking. I like walking on the cliffs and stuff, doing like coastal walks, you know, like a good 10 mile sort of walk. I like that sort of stuff. But yeah, a few of the band's members are into like skating and surfing as well. Excellent. Oh, yeah, just, I was just, I was just telling someone to tune in. I'm out of the minute. That's not good, is it? He's out about. <laughs> <That's not good. laughs> yeah, what's he doing? Yeah, yeah, it's the reggae, reggae. He'll, he'll get it on. He'll get it on the catch up <laughs> anyway. So uh, I just need to turn off because, no. Oh, how has that come through? Shouldn't have got any clicks then. I've muted that. I hate that when you get them bings and bangs. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. I mean, it's good to see that you've you've got quite a lot of content. You've got lots of you've got lots of music out there. So, so there's not, how come you keep ex, you've expanded the band? What's made you have more band members, or is that support? Is that like your roles um, and stuff? I think a lot of the time, for when back going back to like when we were playing um, about six seven years ago, we were going around as a four piece, just two guitars, bass, and drums. But I've always wanted um, brass in the band. Mm. And um, we, yeah, in 2019, before the lockdown stuff, we met um, a trombone player called Isaac and he sort of joined the band uh, full time. And then he sort of brought his mates around as well and arranging the brass parts as well. So this new album that we've been working on for the last two years has got full brass on it. Um, it just, you know, like with reggae and dumb music, it just, you just need that. You need that brass in there. I think. Yeah, you, you, you're right. You're right because it. <clears throat> it, it... It's when you see, when you see well from from the seventies and the eighties and, and onwards, you a lot of the bands they were like a cast of thousand. I used to look at the stage and think, how do they make any money? There's that many in the band. <laughs> Whatever yeah, they get yeah. paid, has got to go between twelve. You know, it's got one, two, three. It's twelve in this band. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. It's hard organizing that many people, but when it's all on stage and going at full power, it's worth it. Yeah. Because you've you've, it's you've a big sound. You've got a tr you've got your track. Well, we'll have that on later on. We'll have that towards the end of the show. But you've got your your latest track that's been released. So wh when's the album? Is the album out? The album's not out yet, is it? Is no, the album's track? not out yet. We recorded it in January 2020, and we recorded really? it in Thailand as well. And um, yeah, so we were out there for like a month, and then came back, and then all the the COVID stuff happened, and we were down to play some really big shows that year. Like, did, have you heard of NAS Festival? Yeah. And yeah, we were playing main stage NAS festival. So um, we lost all those shows because of the pandemic stuff. And the way that we were funding the album, like we haven't, we're not signed to a label or anything. Um, so we were funding the album through all of those live shows. Yeah. Um, and then we lost all of that. So it should have come out that year, but we've been put two years behind. We've just done a crowdfunder and really generously all of our fans have donated us the money to, to get that ready. So I'm hoping the whole album will be out by sort of late October, November this year. And it will literally be like a huge like thing for us to get that out. Yeah. Been sitting on those songs for a long time. <laughs> so so at some some I'm interested because I'm gonna be there. Summer fest, what are you gonna be focusing on there? You're gonna be put, putting some of your new stuff in the set or are you gonna focus on your Definitely, stuff? yeah. We've been um working on our live set a lot recently and um yeah, we've been, since we sort of were allowed to gig again, we kind of just played safe songs that we've been playing for years, you know what I mean? And then we've sort of been relearning our, this new album, how to play it live and how it will sound live. So, yeah, there'll definitely be lots of new stuff in there as well as some of our old tracks as well. 
Excellent. So yeah, it'll be, and, it'll be really exciting to play it on a big stage as well. So oh, it will it, most definitely, and it's uh, you know a big arena as well. So it's uh, it's, it's, oh, gonna, yeah. it's gonna it's gonna be, it's gonna be a cracking day. And the good, I mean, the good thing about it's. The, there's a bad thing about being on start because it depends if everyone because sometimes people don't turn up to later on. But I'm hoping everyone turns up bang on the start of the show because it's a big it's a it's a big day. Um, but at least once that's over, you'll be able to enjoy the rest of the day, won't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's when we saw that gig, like it's one thing, like playing your first sort of stadium show, but then also to share the stage with some of the acts that are playing. Yeah, like, it would just be an amazing thing to be at anyway. I know, I'm hoping I... that we're going to take a little bit, a little um, mini bus from Exmouth up to Blackburn, <laughs> and see if one of some of our hardcore fans might come and watch us in the stadium. I'm, I think I'm, be I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Yeah. And I, well, I'll, you'll you'll see me there on the day because I'll be coming and grabbing you and doing a live interview. I might be setting up a little TV studio there, but I'll be wandering around grabbing the axe as they're getting on stage and uh, having a bit of a chat with them, see what they're up to. Uh, yeah, it's, awesome. it's cool. It's cool. So what, what other uh, gigs have you got planned besides that then, besides Summerfest? we got a lot on. So, um, yeah, we have. We've got, we're just talking about um, some gigs that are sort of penciled in as well, as well as some confirmed ones. Let me just uh, have a look on here so I can remember them all. So, um, talking about... <clears throat> We've got, uh, in May, we've got Dark Music Festival, which is in Dartmouth down here. And we're headlining that on a Saturday, so that'll be good. Um, and then the next one after that is in Exeter Phoenix, which is a really cool little venue, actually, in the middle of Exeter. And we're supporting King Hammond. Yeah, um, sounds familiar. Yeah, and the Rude Boy Mafia. Yeah, I think he used to be in Bad Manners and oh, uh, The Selector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We supported him before, yeah. and he, he actually asked us to support again, so that's really nice of him. Oh, you, he must have liked you then. That, that's brilliant. Yeah. And then the same weekend as that um, Summerfest in Blackburn, we've got Elderflower Fields, which is in Sussex. So we're all over the country that weekend. So that'll be well fun. <laughs> You'll be knackered at the end of that. You'll be waiting to get back to uh, back back to Devon to chill out a yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, luckily after that we've got um, our hometown festival, Exmouth Festival, which is um, it's a really cool festival actually. It's right on the estuary here, so it's beautiful to like sort of, and it's really well attended and it's completely free. Um, and we always have a good crowd for that one. Oh, cool it's like that. six or seven thousand people turn up for that, so that will be good. Um, and that's also uh, who's playing that one, Musical Youth. So oh, Pastor Duxley, Pastor Duxley, Duxley, Duxley on the left. On. Duxley, they yeah. were awesome when they, <laughs> they, were awesome when they yeah. came out. They were dead. They were really different, obviously young yeah, sounding. Yeah. But I, I think I've got that on single, on a yeah. final single. So they're playing our hometown festivals, which will be quite fun. Musical you, musical oldies now. I mean, how old are they now? They've all been bumming on. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old enough to be playing Exmouth Festival. Musical Youth. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Excellent. Right, I'll tell you what, we're going to have another track now. Uh, this is yeah, uh, Demons. And this was the track that awesome. Tony said, you've got to go and, go and listen to Demons, see what you think of it. And the, the Mister, I've not got the Mr Fox on, but there's a Mr Fox one, which is interesting, because that's a very political track, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, let's have this track in. We'll be right back, people. Listen to me now. <laughs> How good is that, people? How good is that? So, if you just join us, we're talking to Barefoot Bandits. Uh, that is awesome, mate. And you're right. You had, you've got the um, you had the um, horn section in that track, which yeah, uh, yeah. You need it. It's it's fantastic. It's good to add. It's good to have added it on. Definitely, definitely, Love it. definitely. It's nothing like live brass. I think. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Really you do. <laughs> Wonderful. So we've got a uh, well, we've got a question. This is really cutting edge. What's what someone said? I'm not getting. Yeah. Uh, what's your favourite song to perform? That's one of them, anyway. And why? It's, it's a two two um, barrel question. That one. One of my favourite songs to perform. Um, it would have to be at the end of our set. We've got this song called "Full Moon Pressure," and it's all about. Um, whether people actually believe that they get affected by a full moon or not. Oh. So, yeah, it's a good one. And it's it, right in the middle of it, it's got a really crazy sort of samba, Latino bit in it. So it's really fun to play. Is that what, did you say that was one of your new ones? 
yeah, it's unreleased, so it'll be on this new album. Oh, he's teasing but, us, people. He's teasing us. I was going to yeah. find it and play it. Mark, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's great. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking around. If people are wondering why I'm looking around, I've not got 10 people helping me on my own here, but I'm I'm looking at one system that should have the updated questions on, it's not refreshing, so I'm having to look. So if you wonder why I'm looking around, that's why. Uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, this this one, here we go, uh, from Fractal Fan. He says, uh, what's your favourite home-cooked meal? <laughs> oh that's hard isn't it um, yeah. I, I love cooking so um, I don't know I, I like I like making carbonara actually like oh, yeah. the proper Italian way like just with eggs and pepper and um, pecorino but um, yeah I, I love a good steak and I like making a rock four sauce for that well. oh, oh very nice <laughs> very, very posh yeah you can say you're yeah, not from yeah. Sol- you can say you're not from Salford that's amazing carbonara because a lot of people <laughs> think it's got cream in a carbonara and it's not it's just egg, eggs in it no nah, it's just eggs yeah there you go my my, um, my girlfriend's Italian so yeah oh so man she, um, you've, yeah you've dropped on that well my wife uh, lived with uh, with a, a Italian couple for a bit when she was working down in Bedford, so she's uh, she's on the, she's on the Italian uh, cooking, which is yeah, great. You have to make it their way, otherwise they'll they'll punch you. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> having said that, if anyone comes near my grill, my barbecue, and starts messing with that, then I get really yeah, upset. Yeah, exactly. My brother did it one day. Was having a party, and he it oh. started to turn me burgers and my steak over. I come back, want you to turn them over. I want you? Da- Why have you done that? Yeah, I don't know where I'm up to. I don't know where I'm up to now. You gone? Get away. Yeah. So yeah. Well, don't mess Precious with anybody's things, food. <laughs> Ex- <laughs> excellent, excellent. Oh, someone said before, how many guitars have you got? <laughs> You've got a lot of guitars behind you there, haven't you? Well, my girlfriend's a musician too, so most of these are her guitars in here, actually. But, um, yeah, uh, probably about 40-odd in this house, I think. Wow. So it's, if yeah. she, well, you'll have to let us know what band she's in. We'll go and check her out. Has she got some stuff out Yeah, there? of course. Yeah, yeah, she's got, she's got, um, she's Charlene Soraya solo, solo act. Right, we'll get, we'll get our street team on that, Charlene Soraya, because yeah. I've got no chance. I'll, I'll spell that wrong. I'm dyslexic and it's not a good, not good at all. Uh, yeah, no so, worries. Uh, John's been on. He does two shows for Live Tribe, and they're on our station. Is there an artist that you would love to work with, and if so, why? Um, I've always loved um, the work of Alex Gray. Do you know Alex Gray? Doesn't ring a bell. I'm probably be really psychedelic um, sort of drawings and um, all about like human anatomy and stuff. Um, I'll link you right to his Instagram and you'll see some of his work. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but one of my favourite artists is actually lives um, around the corner from me. He's called Malcolm Horton, right? And he paints um, murals and um, yeah, lots of really lovely work. He actually painted um, a thing for Greenpeace back in the eighties, I think it was, and it went wow. all around the world and raise a lot of money for Greenpeace. Um, he's a lovely guy. He's an old old school hippie guy. He looks like Billy Connolly. Excellent. He's from me. So, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> well, a lot of them are artists are, 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 are like that. Anyway, my wife's a designer as well, and I've, no, I've been around a few artists. The, the bizarre thing about some of the artists that I know, they create some amazing work. Um, is that, how much is that? We're not selling it. What do you mean? Oh, it's one of my... You're yeah, supposed to be yeah. getting, getting it sold. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like nuts. And yeah. all artists want to do, the creatives, is just create it, and they don't want to sell it or do anything or push it. They just want to, mm. they just want to do the craft, and that's what it's they like. It's a classic it's, thing, isn't it? Mad. Business art. It's mad. It is absolutely... So that's why you have to meet people that are business people as well to help you when you're trying to make art. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because otherwise, you just keep going to have a house full of rubbish. Uh, have yeah, we got yeah. anything else? Uh, no, I'm looking for questions. Oh, while we're on the we was on the food subject a minute ago, he's not here at the minute, Dan from the Reggae Show. But he always asks yeah. this question, and it comes up every week: King size pot noodles should they come with a king size uh, flavor sachet? Because <laughs> they come with the regular. Um, that's that's the big debate. Yeah, they should. And also, but you should have some of your own seasonings as well to whack in there to make it your own. Oh, I, I like <laughs> that. Well, someone else was talking Fried about Fried chilies and stuff like that. Oh, you man. Need some of that. Now you talk. Add it to the broth. See, I don't, eat, I don't eat pot noodles. I've never liked them since they come out, and I just look at them and go, "What's that? Yeah. And what's that rubbish?" But anyway, it's just one of those things, isn't it? But people yeah. love them, don't they? What do you What do you do when when you're on uh, what on tour? Does it all get a bit crazy with fast food and rubbish because you're on on? That? Um, try to stay away from that sort of stuff. Hey, look, usually the plays we sh- uh, the shows we play now is quite a nice rider, and there's usually 
because a lot of them are reggae events. Sometimes there's some really nice, you know, jerk chicken going or something like that. And that's just banging, isn't it? Yeah. But I think we, we have done a couple of um, crazy sort of 3 a.m. stops in like uh, McDonald's or something. But I always just go for some chips. I'm not eating the chicken sludge. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't blame it. So <laughs> you just mentioned that. You, you're that you're that well known now. You've got riders. So what's, what's your riders for Summerfest? What have you, what have you insisted on? For um, <laughs> well, just not so specific. Just make sure we're getting fed and watered, really. Excellent. That, right, that's I, the stage I'm we're gonna, at. I'm gonna we fi- haven't got our... Um, I'll find your dressing of... room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we so, haven't got our bottle of rum yet, I don't think. So. Oh, man. We'll have, to, we'll have to bring some with us, some rum. Now, see, yeah, yeah. see there's, uh, I think it's the Zach Brown band in the in the States, country band. They actually take their own, I think they take their own food truck with them and they feed people Do while they? they're there. Yeah, they have like a big cook-off and everything, feed all the fans oh. and everything, which I think is awesome, awesome, isn't it? It's yeah. wonderful. Wonderful. Right, should we have a, what, should we have another track? Should we get another one on the on the go? I think yeah, we should. Yeah, go for it, yeah. Uh, oh, I've got, I've got some, what I forgot here. So we've got your new one, and we've got, uh, I've got one, I've got one here, it's a live version, Slug Dug, Duck, Slug Dub. Should we have that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, go for it, yeah. We'll give, we'll give this a go, people. Get, get your lugs around this. There you go. And for all the people who go, what's Dub? That was Dub. That was a bit of dub for you, because you get that. Oh, what's dub? Yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, Janice yeah. has just been on. She said, oh, my God, how good are they? Yeah, I know. That's why I've got them on the show. Oh, nice she arranged it, but that's why we've got you on the show. It's it's brilliant. Thanks, it's a It's a brilliant vibe, mate. So you said earlier on that you did the – are you the main writer then for the for the music? Yeah, I, I write the lyrics, but we um... – we tend to write all the structures and music together. Like um, we practice sort of about 10 miles away from here um, in like a little homemade studio. And we did all the demos for our album there. And then that's what I was saying earlier. We took it out to Thailand and recorded it all. Man, that's um, awesome. Which was, yeah, a really epic part of all of our lives, I think. Um, um, but yeah, we kind of, I kind of write the lyrics. I haven't written any lyrics for a while just because we've been sat on this album. It's like it's like I need to get this album out first, and then I can move on to the next stuff. Yeah. Even though we've got loads of us new ideas floating around, but I want to put this full focus into this album. Yeah, it's a bit of a blocker in it, but that that's that's good. That's good that you've got that focus, but it can be frustrating. I mean, the last couple of years, we we ain't talking about it on the station. We we took the news off for that. Um, yeah. but it's basically put a. It put a pause on everybody's lives for, for it's two years, isn't it? It's put a pause on everybody's yeah. life, and I think the mental effects on a lot of people is is immense. And I think it's going to be a few years before we get all that. And you know, thing people like you, you know, you've got a project you're working on, um, people's mm. businesses just stopped, and and then you know, how do you get that all going again? And there's there's a bit there can be a bit of a lag in it. So you you know, you'd have been further on than you are now, which is frustrating. Yeah, it is ridiculous. I mean. I think I'm past the point now of like you can look back at that and just dwell on it, but now it's like right, come out the other side and do your best again. Now we're building up more momentum again. I mean, like I said, when we came back from Thailand, like there was lots of momentum about the band we were playing main stage on um, some festivals and stuff. But you know, like now this year's looking good. You know, playing our first stadium show, like you said, at Summerfest. Uh, supporting like UB40 and Aswad and people like that, like that's that's massive for us. Yeah, hopefully our first sort of little venture into France as well later on in the year. Oh man, so, love France. Yeah, love France to bits. Yeah. It's awesome. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I can imagine in, in France there'll be a lot of that. There'll be a lot of reggae fans in France. So you, you, they, they, they're oh, quite yeah, diverse yeah. with the the music taste. So you probably you probably go down a storm over there. Definitely, our, our drummer spent a lot of time in France playing music, and he said. He's been trying to get us out there for the last three years, so yeah. Yeah, I love France. Looking forward to that. That'll be that'll be awesome, mate. It's, uh, so so you've got that planned, or that's something you're looking at? Um, we're looking at it at the minute. I mean, um, I think it's going to happen. Yeah, it just needs to be confirmed, really. So it'll be a really good thing for us to do, anyway. Yeah. So by the sound, well, because the, the the sound that you're obviously you've all critique your sound and you and your music. Have you all got a music background, or is have you? Is it yourself taught? How was how how did you come to play music? Does that make sense? Who did? Um, yeah. So all of us have sort of studied music in one way or another, and I think all of us have actually taught music as well. Oh um, wow! Well, maybe all of us, maybe most of us. But yeah, I, I I'm a guitar teacher as well at the minute, and um, I I learned I started learning guitar when I was about six. 
Wow. Um, uh, and then our bass player, he's been playing bass since he was a little kid as well, and he's been teaching. So is our drummer as well. So we've all been playing music for years, basically. Mm. Um, and I think that's why um, we work well together. We sort of get in the studio when we come up with something quite quickly, but it's quality as well. So, you know. Yes. And and because when you when you mention reggae bands and dub bands and all the rest of it, you you imagine the first thing that comes to mind is people that are just like yeah man, they're just you know what I mean. But but <laughs> you you come over as very professional in your process and your your thoughts and how you run the bit. You know what I mean? You're not just like well, oh, we'll just chill yeah. out here, um, which is interesting because that's what you, not not always what you expect from the genre. Does that make sense? No, I think I think yeah. Like um, I've always loved the feel of reggae music. Like since I was young, I, I just think it's a dance music and it's infectious. The thing I love about it is it's all backwards. So like, whereas people are brought up playing like lead guitar and like sort of playing a million notes all at once, rather the guitar turns into a bit of more of a rhythmic instrument with a scratch sound, and the bass leads the dub line, like, and also the drums are backwards with the kick on and snare on the free like a one drop yeah i think uh that's why i love it it's almost alternative to like your rock and your pop mm. sort of things yeah but i love like um all the sort of um, crossover bands like sting and the police and stuff like that oh. as well um yeah groundation as well like jazz yeah and, yeah you know, together put- so i love all that i just love that feel but um yeah yeah well that was one of it there was three bands when i was back in the day the jam the police and you yeah. fought in you and i think everyone see the police as being uh like a new wave pop band but the what they mm. did they mixed punk rock with the reg with the reggae beat and that's how they got sure. their distinctive yeah. sound and then i think they were awesome back in the day they were just they were brilliant stings released some decent stuff but the, the police were were on it, weren't they? The sound was just yeah. Unbelievable. Copeland was just a phenomenal drummer, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, Def. Most- and I think Andy Summers as well, because he came from a sort of psych background as well, didn't he? Was like so, it all just all those different styles just married each other and yeah. made something they, beautiful. They were awesome. They were awesome. I'm not saying they could sing live; they weren't always good live. Uh, but 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 they would. They were. <laughs> and a band that I never never went never got to see when they were when they were together, the Police. And I uh, wish I had really. Them. Yeah, it's a shame, but never yeah, mind. I'd love to have seen them. Yeah, me too, me too. Have we got anything else? Let's have a look, see if we've got any more questions. Uh, oh, here we go. Well, that's a good one. Uh, someone said, do you get nervous before a gig? Um, no. I With the gigs that we do with the band, I, I'm always feeling good because there's it's like there's a team of us and we're all vibing off each other. I think we all get nervous in our own individual ways, but I think we all sort of collectively get get each other into the zone of going, yeah, we're performing. This is what we were meant to do. Yeah. So it's more excitement rather than nerves. Yeah. I, get I mean, I did get I, I I play solo gigs as well, just around sort of the local area, and I have to say, I did get really nervous after the lockdown thing because I hadn't done it for so long, and I, and I was like, do I even know how to do this anymore? Yeah. But yeah, it suddenly sorted itself out, and we're back in the game again now. Yeah, and, I, and you're right. I mean, it's not the same, but I do I do shows every day, and I know I, I never get nervous doing my my shows because I've just it's just at yeah. first I would have done, but not now. It's just like okay, let's what what we got who we're talking to today, or what what's the show today that we're doing? Which you know, I, I get that, and but I do, but I also because I do this day in day out, you get you get into a rhythm. Yeah, but it's do, your life, isn't it? Yeah, and That's I do, but I do public speak in schools and colleges and things like that and before i do yeah. them i always get a bit of a churn but i know what i'm doing and once once i get out there and start then it's, it's all go i think it's the anticipation before yeah. before you go on so it's how you absorb that's the it. thing yeah it's how you absorb when you're out of your comfort zone yeah, yeah. right someone else is out. i'm going over here again because this is where me yeah my, my things are coming over um what have we got here we've got another one You've answered this earlier on, but someone's asked where you get your inspiration. It's from the local area, you said, didn't you? Nature. And... Yeah, I think I get, well, musically, a lot of what I mentioned before, like growing up with like Bob Marley and also Desmond Decker and like the two tone thing as well. And also like the Clash, the punk crossover. Um, but yeah, um, I think most is. Yeah. Have I lost you? We've lost him, people. 
It's frozen up. Have you? Yeah, Ollie, you're, you back, you're back now. You're back now. <laughs> I thought it was me. I thought, what's going on there? I can't hear him anymore. Ah, uh, right, yeah. So, so you're basically just walking around this local area and going down the beach and, um, yeah, countryside. Nature's a massive thing for me and a lot of it portrays in my music, I think. Yeah. Yeah, just shut a couple of things down the internet. It's not doing very well. Uh, Jack, I think someone's taking the mic here. Uh, Jack Law says, what are the Vox for Hard Life intro? Oh, that's that's our drama. That's yeah, I, I, thought, I, 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 I can tell. I could tell it was a... It was a I'll tell him I'll write him down for him. You, you'll write him down for you. <laughs> do, do you know, this yeah. is the thing with drummers. Drummers are always, they're always mischievous drummers, aren't they? Always mischievous. Every drummer you meet is the same. Yeah, they're always winding up, aren't they? I think it's because of the back. <laughs> they're at the back, secretly wanting the attention that the lead singer gets, so they just cause crap at the back for the band and just mess <laughs> about. I think that's what it's all about. Anyway, we'll probably get a response from him again in a minute. Um, <sighs> we've had that nervous before again. Not again. Uh, right, OK. I uh, don't think there's anything else on there for now. I think we might have your new track. Well, I think we might yeah. we might play that, which we've got the video for it. We need it. We should, could do it another one, really. Um, is is there any story behind this? It's called Big Guns. There is, yeah. So the 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 sort of um, specific meaning about this is about the the guy who first translated the hieroglyphs and the, the Rosetta Stone, basically, and how the Church of England tried to kill him off because they didn't want a French guy to be known for it. They wanted an English person to be known for it. So that's what it says in the in the verses and stuff about um, him sort of being a child prodigy and accused of plagiarism and stuff. But the general meaning behind it is don't let the people with power control the everyday person just because they're in a position of power. Don't let them sort of come down on the little man. Hey, awesome. <laughs> Phil has... As it, it's got an animation video, so you kind of get the ancient I know. Egypt I, sort I, of I vibes. I know. Yeah. I've watched it earlier on, but... but... Very philosophical from a reggae band, not what you'd expect in the same <laughs> sentence, would it? But you know, it's normally about oppression. So, actually, it is a bit about oppression there, isn't it? And it's about unjust because that, that's what I think Definitely, a lot of yeah. reg, a lot of traditional reggae does, and why I like the genre. A lot of the time, it's from a place of uh, oppression or injustice. Protest songs, protest, yeah, protest songs. and I, and I think that's why people get behind them because they can have, they can translate that to their own. It's in- meaningful. It's meaningful. That's what it is. That's I lo- why I like. I love it, mate. I love it. Let's have this. Wow, wow. Well, let me get rid of that. That's awesome, people. This uh, barefoot bandits we're chatting to. That. That's their, their, their latest release. Um, let me just pause that. I love it. Love it, man. That's awesome. Seriously, what a sound. Right, you're, you're back in the room. Yeah. Decided to go on to uh, another another video, Airbnb advert, and they're not even sponsoring, so that can go. We don't want that, do we? <laughs> go on that nonsense. You don't want to sponsor us. Go away. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, there's a question here, uh, and she's just reminded me, Janice, because I've asked it a few times. Some people don't want to answer it, and you don't have to answer this question. You don't have to answer any questions. Um, but I throw it out there every now and then. Which which band would you throw in Room 101? You don't have to oh. answer. It's up to you, mate. It's up to you. I, I, <laughs> but I like to throw that in every now and then as a, as a little one. Yeah, there's a few, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Here we go. Ho-ho! <laughs> right. Um, oh, it's got to be Ed Sheeran, isn't it? Just, yeah, it's got to put him in there, really. Well, I'll tweet him in a minute. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Hey, imagine, imagine if he's on. Imagine, imagine if you, he's just. Can we, can we put songs in as well? You put whatever you want in, mate. It's your show. This it's your it's your room one oh one. Fill put, your bucket. I put the song Mr. Brightside in there. Mr. Brightside overplayed. Yeah, yeah just I know a lot of um, bands in pubs. When I go out and have a pint, I just hear people play that song all the time. There's a few. There's like, um, is it Dakota as well? That's always played. Yeah. Sex on fire. Oh. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, yeah my, my wife yeah. can't stand that. Sex bring on back. Fire. Bring back reggae. That's bring, what I'm saying. Definitely reggae. Just some a bit. Give in... reggae more of a platform. <laughs> should, we should, mate. That's why have the, we have the reggae show on a, on a Thursday, yeah. and uh, and we're into the indie as well because it's not all the same old, same old stuff. And my shows tend to be a bit of a roller. I call it the crazy paving show because 
new music show. There'll be a mix of reggae on there. There'll be dance music. There'll be there'll be all sorts of all sorts on it. But re- for me, reggae. If if I could only pick one genre to listen to, if they said that we're getting rid of all the genres now, Kirk, and you can only listen to one, what would it be? I'll be like, give me re- give me reggae all day long. Oh, nice. All day yeah. long. Seriously, it's me for the way forward, isn't it? Well, I reckon it was my first love in music was reggae two tone. It's just I just love that sound. I'm going back to what you said before, the oppression, the you know, King King and Tyler for you yeah. fought in my I'd find it difficult to pick which one of them because they just if you listen to the lyrics and listen to what the story's about, it's just phenomenal. It just hits you every time. I love yeah. it. Definitely. And uh, yeah, and everyone goes with the Marley, don't they? And they always play the same tracks. But yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. He's he's good. He's good. There's some really good reggae artists out there at the minute. Protege and people like that. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, oh, here's one. Um, advice for any up and coming reggae artist. Been specific and said reggae, not just artists. Um. Well, I've always made the sort of point as as we progress in this band is um just make the music if you're because i'm an atheist i don't believe in any religion and stuff and we've never you see a lot of bands sort of going jar praise jar and babylon and all that sort of stuff and it's like okay fair enough but i don't know i kind of feel like that sometimes you know yeah, I don't I, know. You're using that. I get that in and the it, wrong way. Do you I, see what I mean? I, get, I just love the music. I love the feel of the music. So I write my own songs and put them in into that sort of style, but without the religious side of things. I like that because I think religion causes problems. Mate, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 to, I totally agree with you. I've got no issue with anyone being religious if that if, yeah, that, if course, that gives yeah. them comfort and the faith. Who am I to question? You know. But yeah, forget it. For me, I'm not. I don't, just go, be true. If you're going to play reggae in England as well, just be true. Yeah. Just. Yeah. I mean, some of the artists that are doing the jar bit and all the rest of it, I get that because that they, they're probably Rastaf- Rastafarians. And all yeah. That. But if, yeah, if that's fine. If, yeah. If there's three blokes from Salford that have, you know, what I mean, the only the, <laughs> the, only, the only bit of Jamaica they've been to is the chicken shop in, you know, what I mean, the town centre. Yeah. Then drop it, lads, because it's not your thing, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's also a bit like the. Um, a bit like I'll do like a, some hip hop and and grime and stuff like that, and and, yeah. and they all drop the M bomb in, don't they? And this that and slap this and do that. Yeah, and you think, yeah. Guys, doesn't have to be like that, does it? Just nah, make nah. it your own. Don't copy everybody else. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. But yeah, there's. Uh, it's, it's interesting. I, th- I don't think it's got any place to be a fair religion. Um, if that's up to people who thought. Pra- but I think you're right. It causes yeah. so much. Going back to what that track was about, you know, don't let the big put you down for me yeah. it's for me the the fundamentals behind religion are right it's don't kill your neighbor and don't sleep with your, your, your you know yeah. your wife and steal great yeah they're, they're fundamentals mm. but i think it's there to just to control people crawl control the masses and yeah and get them because if you think about those sort of fundamental fundamental things i think that like just being a, a human you should just have that in you anyway you know not to do that that's bad yeah. Um, you don't need to sort of follow a religion to do that. But then, like you said, I respect everyone and their beliefs yeah. and stuff, as long as you don't harm anyone. Correct. That's the big thing. Correct. Because I've been sat around the table, because I've worked for uh, companies, global companies, that people from all over the world, and mm. we've talked together and you just talk to them as normal. People don't start throwing any, any of that nonsense at me. I'm not interested, man. Oh, because yeah, yeah. We're, we're, the show's gone really quick. What we've been asking artists to do, and I hope you say yes, is we've, we're gathering together artist drops. So if you could do something like This is the Barefoot Bandits and you're listening to Dougie Stone Radio, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Cool. This is Laurie from the Barefoot Bandit. You're listening to Dougie Stone Radio. Perfect. Eddie will be on that in a bit. Because what we're doing is when we're doing the shows, we're dropping a minute. And you know what? It's made a big difference to me shows because you just got the vibe from the art, especially if you play your track, because we'll yeah, drop that in before we play the track. Well, isn't it? Yeah, it really so, is. And yeah. it, mean, it means a lot to it's us. A nice well. touch. Uh, oh, yeah. So, oh, here we go. Dan Evans, send me send me the link tomorrow. No, you should have been here now watching it live, shouldn't you? Have we got any more questions from anybody? Let's have a look if we've got any more questions. Um, so, is there anything you want to plug? Do you, where, where, where's people best finding you if they want to get hold of you? Where, where do you want to sort of hang out? All of our socials are basically We Are TBB. We Are The Barefoot Bandit, stands for. Um, and that's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Our website is wearetbb.com. Um, and you can find all of our stuff on there, YouTube and that. 
I'd love it if everyone just gives Big Guns uh, a play and a watch the, the animation video. Mm. And we're going to be releasing singles all over summer until the album's out. So, And we're also going to put on, um, up a load of live gigs that we're playing soon. So watch out for that. Well, brilliant. Well, as you release them, because we're following you on all socials and on the old Spotify and stuff like that, as they get released, we'll, oh, be, drop, yeah. we'll be dropping them into our shows and... Uh, and they'll be on the reggae show as well. I know. I know Dan's a big fan, and he like he likes your stuff as well, which is brilliant. And uh, it, it's it's been good. I'm looking forward to. It. I'm gonna definitely gonna track you down on the day, uh, summer fest, and we'll, we'll have a bit of a chat there and meet the rest of the band. And I'll check out if the drummer's a bit. Is he still on here, Jack? He's got the right <laughs> name, hasn't he, Jack. You see, They're I all... have to say this for you. He's probably one of the nicest people I've ever met. I know. So, you know, you can get away with it. If... He knows. He knows. He's not gonna do any art. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should imagine by talking to you. I, I sort of get the feeling of what the rest of the band's going to be like. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure you have a great giggle and hopefully you'll get a minibus soon so you can put more people in. Seriously, seriously, thank you so much for giving us your time and coming on the show. And I think you're wonderful. I think your music is bang on point. I've liked, I've loved discussing with you and having a bit of a chat with you about what you've been doing, where you're up to. And uh, I feel like we've got to know you a little bit more on what the band's all about. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's wonderful. It's been a pleasure. It's great, and uh, I'll see you in May. So yeah, I'll, let, see I'll, you let, there, I'll let you get on with your evening. I'll wrap the show up, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. So uh, thanks very much, and uh, see, awesome. you, see you later. Cheers. Fine. Brilliant. So did you enjoy that, people? That was a Barefoot Bandits. Absolutely brilliant. Part of the Dougie Stone Radio introducing series. What a great guy. I just I just love doing these shows and I think I've got one of the best jobs in the world, haven't I? It's just fantastic talking to artists about what they do, why they do it, and playing some kick-ass music. So thanks for watching, whether you're watching on a rerun or you're watching us live. Um, just keep your Dougie Stone Radio, just Alexa Open Internet Radio. Go to DougieStoneRadio.com, press the player, and download the apps. And until next time... <laughs>